Okay, part five, guys. I just got done recording for part four. I'm like, uh-uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going. I'm still going. The Merchant Saint. It was the dawn of a new day, a day I wouldn't be spending in the underground archive. Audley was worried that returning to work so soon after my fever would make me sick again. But Clarissa wanted me to avoid anything even remotely strenuous. Your health is more important than all else, Lady Rosemine, she had told me. You must be exhausted after spending so many days underground pouring over documents, Audley said. Please take this opportunity to rest. I returned to bed and pointed at the nearby bookshop, bookcase, or book box. In that case, Clarissa fetched me something to read. You intend to continue reading? Of course, reading is a hobby of mine, and how better to relax than with a book of my choosing? It might appear similar to my translation work, but I can assure you that I consider it resting. Clarissa continued to gawk at me. It's been a long time since anyone responded so dramatically, I said with a chuckle, then gave her the title of a book I was only halfway through reading. Hartman did warn me, but still, this is shocking to see in person. Lady Rosemond has been so busy and in such great health recently that she has not had much time to read at her leisure, Lazel Day explained with a giggle as she helped me to get comfortable in bed. Clarissa opened the book box and took out the book title I'd requested. I asked Audley to inform Hart, Pandalore, or Magdalena of my absence, then started reading. By the time Clarissa announced that she was leaving to attend the Archduke Conference, her voice barely even reached me. My book already had my full attention. All of a sudden, an ordinance perched atop my book, forcing me to look up. This is Hildebrand, it said. I am sorry to hear you have fallen ill. My intention was to send you a present to raise your spirits, but Mother told me not to, since you are not supposed to be here in the first place. Get, get well soon. I smiled at his cute message and sent my response. My fever has gone down, but my concerned retainers advised me to rest for one more day. I will be back tomorrow. As promised, I went to the Underground Archive. The next day, Sylvester and Florencia were attending their meeting with the royal family. I wouldn't find out how that went until my return to the dormitory. While well, Anastasis and Eggleteen were busy at socializing. Good day to you, Lady Rosemine, Hanalore said as she saw me. It was wonderful to see you well again. She knew from experience that a simple, t simple tea party would make me collapse, so she wasn't too surprised that my trip around the Royal Academy had made me ill. I smiled and confirmed that I was indeed feeling better, and it was there that Hildebrand came over. Rosemine, I'm glad to see you recovered. Indeed, Prince Hildebrand, I replied. I thank you ever so much for your kind ordinance. He beamed in response, his purple eyes sparkling with joy. For a prince, he was very open with his feelings, which was cute. The way he acted at times like this reminded me of Melkor, and I ended up letting my emotions come through as well. As we continued our conversation, I suddenly felt a feeling I was being watched. A quick scan of the room revealed that Magdalena was inspecting me closely. The moment our eyes met, she smiled and said, Let us go into the archive, everyone. Once inside, I silently began working on my translation until someone tapped me on the back. Rosemine, do you have a moment? I turned around to see Prince Hildemann. Yes, I asked. Is there a word you don't recognize? It was the first time he had requested my assistance. Or it wasn't the first time he had requested my assistance. I wanted to ask you something while Mother and Handler are taking a break, Rosemine. He pa uh, paused, clearly agonizing over his next words. Are you going to attain the Grudgeshite and become the next Zent? I am not of the royal family. As a result, I am not qualified to take on such a role. So my status as a Zent candidate had at last been shared among the royal family. He had been right to wait for Handler to leave, but I still wasn't sure whether this was something we should discuss in the archive. Hildebrand took my hand. Rosemine, I want to help you. I stared at him in surprise, racking my brain to discern what he meant. I wasn't given much of a chance, though. The patter of footsteps soon interrupted us. Hildebrand, what are you doing? Mother. The prince had gone pale, as signed that he had probably said too much. Lady Magdalena looked down at me. Lady Rosemine, what did my son say to you, might I ask? That he wished to help me, I said. I've already recovered from my fever, but I see that Prince Hildebrand still so thoughtfully concerned about me. Of course, I wasn't going to mention anything about the Zent candidacy. Magdalena gave me a searching look then sighed. Hildebrand let us both take a break, she said, bringing our conversation to an end. After lunch, we got straight back to work. Magdalena was watching Hildebrand even more closely this time, determined to ensure that he would not speak to me again. That was when Sigiswald arrived. Oh, boy. It was my first time seeing him here since the beginning of the Archdu Conference. He commanded our work in the archive for the royal family's sake, then prompted Handler to return to her dormitory to rest. I thank you ever so much for your concern, Handler said to the first prince before taking her leave. She glanced back at me several times as she went, her eyes betraying her concern. I moved to stand, only to be told to sit back down. There is nowhere else we can speak, Stigiswald explained with a peaceful smile while taking a seat opposite me. And as has told me that to convey one's intentions, one must be almost defensively blunt to speaking with you. Oh, uh, there's likely to speak frankly if you don't mind. Anastasius' phrasing annoyed me a bit, but he wasn't wrong. It was much better to be outright straightforward than to allow any misunderstandings to take root, especially when the royal family was involved. I do not mind, I replied, as long as I am not executed for my own bluntness. Fear not. We would not execute such a valuable Zent candidate, Sigiswal said with a smile, then looked at me head on. Indeed, Anastasius told me. He also mentioned that you cannot obtain the Grudgerscheit without being registered as a member of the royal family. 
It seemed that Ditlinda's dedication world and the recent Starbound ceremony had made the sovereign, te sovereign temple appear more and more credible in the days of the country's no eyes of the country's nobles. As a result, calls for the old ceremonies to be revived and a true zent to be found were getting louder. The royals had assumed that even I would manage to obtain the Grudgeshite, but here we were. Just as Prince Anastasis told you, I am not qualified to obtain the Grudgeshite. I would thus advise you to have someone within the royal family secured instead. Please ask Lady Eglantine. Unfortunately, the royal family does not have the leeway to do that, C. just Waltz explained, looking for trouble. Just as the library's equivalent of a foundation had been about to run out of mana, so too were countless magic tools in the sovereignty. Do keep this between us, but there are many magic tools in the sovereignty that have stopped functioning entirely for a lack of anyone to supply them with. For just the other day, one was destroyed. It was destroyed? Some magic tools crumble when they are completely drained of mana. This was seldom the case for the magic tools we normally use, but I suppose that the ones in the sovereignty were particularly old. Citrus Wall continued, We cannot allow valuable magic tools that have survived since the distant past to be destroyed in our generation. Father and the rest of us are already consuming rejuvenation potions every day in our efforts to refill those that were deemed less relevant and abandoned years ago. As such, we do not have nearly enough mana to start donating to the shrines. Allow me to be blunt. Our only option is to take you into the royal family as soon as possible, so that we can have both your mana and unquestionable power for the nobility to follow. And he certainly had good reason to be concerned. Irrigan Schmidt would end up in the brink of destruction if the royal family stopped fielding its magic tools. And I'm assuming that if they st their mana went away, then the entire country would crumble, literally. Under normal circumstances, we would wait until you came of age to have you married into the family and made a royal, but we cannot wait that long. We wish for you to join the royal family as soon as you are able. Our hope is that Ab Arenfest will disown you so that Father may adopt you in his stead until you come of age and are wed to me. Is this not the best possible future in all cases? Not for her! It would mean saving Ferdinand from having to marry Detlindy and subsequently be punished for her crimes. Leaping at the offer simply wasn't an option, though, not with Arenfest's current state of affairs. My father made Ob Arenfest various offers, believing that Arenfest should receive a just re recompense for his cooperation, but the Ob refused them all. I paused. What were his offers? They were fairly reasonable, so just what preferred. Rephrased. Father proposed raising Arenfest's rank, giving the Duchy preferential treatment, and taking as many of its nobles into the sovereignty as possible to strengthen their position as the future Zent. That's not going to happen because we are in a kind of a crisis right now. The royal family had expected Sylvester to be overjoyed, as greater duchies always love gaining influence. He had turned them down, though, saying the deal would not actually benefit Arenfest. And, well, he's right. I must admit, the prince continued, we are troubled that Arenfest would respond so selfishly. Prince Sidgis, while Arenfest's nobles are already struggling to keep up with the new expectations that have come with our sudden and continued rise to the rankings. Other duchies frequently tell us we do not behave in a manner befitting our, posi our position. For these reasons, we would rather not our ranks stay the same, or go down even, until we have managed to catch up. Raising it any higher would make, only make Arenfest suffer. Sidgis, while received my explanation with wide eyes, he was in a position wherein both bottom, rank bottom and top ranking duchies were at his beck and call. Not once had he stopped to properly consider how Arenfest would struggle, stuck between the two extremes of the country's hierarchy as it was. He also subscribed to the mindset that all problems should immediately be dealt with. At no point had it occurred to him that some could only be fixed through sweeping changes over the span of several years. At the same time, he had come to see Arenfest as a duchy with great ambitions, considering that we had passed up an even higher position in the rankings to receive the same treatment as the winners of the country's civil war. In that case, accepting Arenfest's nobles in the sovereignty to strengthen your position would also be negative, since well, that's... Our judge's population is already much too small, and because of extreme circumstances I would not elaborate on here, we were forced to carry out a purge during the winter. Arenfest barely has enough nobles to support itself right now, and will surely collapse if those who do remain were sent to the sovereignty en masse. So just while I put a hand on his forehead and stared at me in silence, he had clearly misunderstood what things were like in Arenfest. In short, I concluded, Arenfest has its own circumstances to deal with. I cannot be adopted by a royal family at such short notice. Even though it is crucial to save Jurgen Smith from a fast approaching collapse, there was clear anxiety in the first prince's voice, but I still refuse to budge. The collapse you speak of can be summarized as a mana shortage, no? That can be solved by anyone. Meanwhile, Arenfest needs me specifically. Do explain such as while leaning forward. In Arenfest, I have duties within the printing industry and the Archducal family. I also serve as the High Bishop and the Director of the Temple's Orphanage. It will not be long before I can entrust my Archduke candidate duties to my siblings, but the rest will not be so easy. Male coroner's retainers will need to observe every ritual and ceremony before they could take over my work as High Bishop, which will take at least a year. The current state of the orphanage also need to be preserved. There will sure to be complications with the printing industry as well. We will need to oversee the handover to Elvira and decide whether the Gutenbergs would accompany me to the sovereignty or continue their traveling. 
Furthermore, I continue my engagement to Wolford is currently stabilizing his, his position as the next op. To dissolve it would send air be to send Arifest into chaos, which we would absolutely need to prepare for. Just as you and the rest of the royal family have wished to avoid another war between the Greater Duchy since the Great Purge, um, Arifest wishes to avoid a war between our Gives when our net own purge is to put the Duchy in such a precarious state. Egotine and Anastasis have mentioned on many occasions that they wanted to avoid causing another civil war. I wouldn't let them pretend not to know how he felt. That is not all, though. My adoptive mother is currently with child and will not be able to supply Arifest of Mana until she has given birth. In the winter, my little sister will perform her divine protection ritual at the Royal Academy, and this time next year, my adoptive father will take his second wife. At the very least, for mana purposes, I cannot leave Arifest until then. Jürgen Smith's mana problems are far more urgent than Arifest. Not to me, I said, ignoring the attempt to protest with a smile. The royal family is simply in need of mana. Thus, allow me to exchange some for another year in Arifest. I would also ask that you use your new understanding of our circumstances to prepare and to accept a condition that will actually benefit us. Do remember that we are not one of the greater duchies you are so used to dealing with. Sister Swab was momentarily stone-faced, and he smiled and turned. My apologies, I did not seem to hear you. I repeated myself word for word. You intend to trade a year's worth of mana... For an extra year in Arifest, it is well confirmed. You would do well to remember that there are seven members of the royal family currently supplying mana. No matter how plentiful yours may be, you cannot hope to equal us alone. He was speaking with a peaceful smile as if addressing a child who didn't understand such a basic fact. Still, my expression did not waver. I already knew that my mana alone wouldn't be enough. At no point have I said that I intend to use my own mana. Recall that the Royal Academy is currently filled with mana-rich individuals. Uh, dedication ritual. Again, Sidiswell gave me a stony look. He then smiled a second time, though it seemed much less natural, and muttered, filled with them. It seemed that freezing for a moment, and then smiling was his way of expressing surprise. It reminds me of how Ferdinand freezes up when he struggles to process something. I adopted the even broader smile, trying to emphasize my advantage while racking my brain for my victory conditions. In the best possible scenario or outcome, I would inform the country that another dedication ritual is to be held, not for my sake, but for the benefit of the royal family, then delegate the preparations and secure myself enough mana to produce, purchase another year in Arifest. The royal family would also help us to earn a bit more gratitude from the other duchies since our nobles had such a hard time managing that on their own. Then from our superior position, we would oblige them to accept as many of our demands as possible. In return for my adoption into the royal family. A switch inside of me had flipped, and now I was in full merchant mode. I looked such a swallow straight in the eye. My aim in this upcoming battle was to secure at minimum a year of time. I could not act, subs act so subserv as subserviently as the average noble, merely nodding in compliance with the, as the royal family listed off one demand after another. Instead, I would take complete control of the conversation. In this verbal wrestling match, I was going to have complete control of the ring. The man in front of me was no longer a prince, but merely someone for me to bargain with. Much like Sylvester, those of the royal family usually left negotiating to their scholars and just delivered the final verdict. During Doing this here in the archive, where Sigiswal was alone and without his retainers, vastly improved my chances of success. I need to use every tool at my disposal to get more time in Arifest and guarantee that the royal family will secure Ferdinand more hospitable living conditions. Here I go. Benno, lend me your strength. Let us perform a dedication ritual during this year's Archduke Conference, I suggested. You intend to take mana from the gathered obs? Sid Swall replied, his lips twitching ever so slightly. That would be unprecedented. Perhaps, but the royal family had already demonstrated that it was willing to gather mana from students. Accepting some from the obs wouldn't be much of a leap. Plus, I didn't intend to take mana only from the obs. The retainers accompanying them would participate in the ritual as well. When you get an opportunity, take it and profit as much as you possibly can. Isn't that right, Benno? Oh my, is there a reason for your surprise, I asked? Performing the dedication ritual is necessary to grant your wish, is it not? Just while evidently hadn't connected the two, he gave me a look of concern and even cocked his head a little, ca causing his luxurious golden locks to sway. My wish? Do you mean my desire for you to be adopted by the Zent, obtain the Grudgeshat, and marry me after coming of age? Not quite. Your wish, as I understand it from Avirifest and the scholars who have accompanied him, is for me to become the sovereign high bishop, visit duchies to perform religious ceremonies and inspire better harvests and more divine protections throughout the land. Is raising Aragon Smith's man of average not your highest priority? That is, since well attempted to protest, but I didn't give him a chance. That was what you asked of Avirifest, was it not? I am confident in my assertion. His demands from just a few days ago had put Aranfest nobles to the ringer, so I wasn't going to let him act like the whole thing hadn't happened. Thus, I continued, I will perform the dedication ritual as per your wish. Having the country's obs and nobles participate should give them a much better understanding of the importance of their temples and religious ceremonies. It should also give them enough experience to repeat the process at home, thereby improving their harvests and allowing them to obtain more divine protections. The sovereign temple will surely be on board, considering their request for more manner-rich individuals to perform religious ceremonies. 
The nobles of other duchies had been pushing for the saint of Arifest to be made the sovereign high bishop and bestow upon them her knowledge of religious ceremonies. Meanwhile, the sovereign temple wanted a manner rich high bishop since they couldn't perform the old rituals with that one. Both parties would be made to participate in the dedication ritual, and as far as I saw it, there was absolutely no way that either of them could refuse. They can learn one of the ceremonies they're so desperate to perform, and we can squeeze every drop of mana out of them. Easy. Not only will this raise the mana average in every single duchy, an outcome that you and the rest of the royal family strongly desire, but it will also secure you an abundance of mana. This in turn will allow me to another year in Arifest. Would you not describe this as a wonderful idea that benefits everyone? Once again, Sigiswald was giving me a blank look. There was a pause in the process of my question, then he suddenly started, and the smile returned to his face. Indeed, that is a wonderful idea, but when exactly will this ritual take place? On occasion, the Archduke Conference would end up lasting for more than two weeks. We still had over a week to go, which was plenty of time to prepare for the ritual. Sure, the schedule would need to be a little bit tighter than usual, since we would need to get everything ready while the, co the, co while the conference was being held, but I didn't expect that to be an it much of an issue. The sovereignty had plenty more nobles than Arifest usually managed with. The last day of the Archduke Conference to do, I said. That should give everyone more than enough time to prepare. That is still too soon. We cannot suddenly amend the schedule when so many nobles are due to be involved. Sigiswal was presumably used to his attendance and scholars making his plans for him. In fact, it wouldn't have surprised me to hear that he simply wandered around doing as instructed. He must not have had experience to experience other people abruptly changing their plans, forcing him to update his schedule on painfully short notice. That was the impression I got from his reluctance to my suggestion, anyway. I could also tell that Sigiswal was finding my stream of seemingly eccentric suggestions to be exhausting. As a prince, he wasn't at all used to dealing with such matters himself. And there was nobody here for him to consult. That, was, that wasn't going to stop me, though. I was determined to drive him into a corner. I need to go all out now that Sylvester can have so Sylvester can have an easier time dealing with the royal family in the future. Oh my, I said, feigning in surprise. Prince Sigiswald, I never expected you to be so hesitant about this dedication ritual. I thought you would embrace it as the perfect idea, especially after you proclaimed that raising the country's mana average was our highest priority. I placed a hand on my cheek and allowed a few crocodile tears to wet my eyes. Did you lie to me about the urgency of the mana crisis? Was your intention simply to get me into the sovereign temple to appease the obs of other duchies? I would never... Ob Arifest was ever so troubled by the royal family's request that I serve as the new high sovereign high bishop. To think the mana crisis was but a ruse all along. Taking inspiration from Angelica, I cast my eyes down in an attempt to look heartbroken. The impact was enormous. Sigiswal cast aside his smile and desperately shook his head. Please wait, Rosemond. This is all a misunderstanding. It is unequivocally true that we must raise the mana average among Jürgen Smith's nobles with great haste. However, rarely, surely such a large-scale ceremony must be performed only after extensive discussion with the Sovereign Temple and the relevant scholars. I was simply surprised that you would make such a suggestion when we had already fa not already factored it into our plans. The preparations will take time, of which we have so little. Oh, that's what you're going to say. Bad move. Now it was my turn to be stone-faced. After working his way through various excuses, Sitchwell asked me whether I understood, his usual smile now back on his face. I gave an exceptionally cold grin as I delivered my response. Prince Sitchwell, might I ask you a question? By all means, it was never a life goal of mine to be taken into the royal family. Still, is it not normally the case that the Zen's adoption of an Archduke candidate should take place only after he has had an extensive conversation with the respective Ob, and enough time has passed to allow for the relevant plans and preparations to be made? Tijiswal merely stared at me, his lips still politely curved, and took his silence as an opportunity to continue. Tell me, which is more sudden and drastic, being ordered to prepare for a dedication ritual, or being ordered to join the royal family as the king's adopted daughter? Is my adoption really so trivial that you would choose the former? It surprises me that Arifest and I mean so little to you all. The prince blinked at me several times, now looking very serious indeed. He must have thought I was some demure rich girl who would accept his every word. Or maybe he had only ever faced people who expressed their slight criticisms, criticisms indirectly through euphemisms. At last, he said, in no way do we look down on you or Arifest. We act because your adoption is urgent and necessary. No, what is truly urgent and necessary is seeking uh, solving the royal family's mana shortage. If you are so desperate that you cannot wait for me to come of age and would throw Arifest into chaos, then I am sure you could order the Sovereign Temple and the Oz to prepare for the dedication ritual. That may seem unreasonable, but so is the correct quest to avoid of me. Besides, I thought it was the royal family's specialty to ignore everybody else's intentions when making demands. Do you honestly believe that we are prioritizing our own needs, Sigiswald asked, taken aback? It may seem as though we are being selfish, but we are attempting to maximize the benefit for everyone. I grimaced, given that you are consulting me, I can accept that you would at least have some desire to accommodate others. In practice, however, you have repeated the royal family's needs time and time again while ignoring my circumstances. Have you even made one suggestion for my benefit? In the first place, there, needs to be, there are needs for, these needs for mana, the Grutishite, my adoption, and the Ob's education above, all re, above religious ceremonies. They are all what you desire. 
Not a single one of them helps Aaron fester me. Do you understand that? In truth, I did want to obtain and read the creature shape, but I wasn't going to say that here. I needed to drive Sigiswal into a corner so that he would agree for the royal family to hold another dedication ritual. The only reason I am suggesting this troublesome dedication ritual is because it suits the needs of the royal family. For religious ceremonies and the like, the Ops can simply consult their own temples and deal with the situation themselves. Even Prince Sigis and Anastasia said that duchies must take care of their own problems. After listening closely to my explanation, Sigiswal cocked his head at me. The purpose of the ritual would be able to allow you another year in Arenfest, but you and your duchy are the ones who need that time, not us. The royal family had been unsuccessfully searching for the creature type for years, and now it was dangling right before their eyes. No doubt they had lost sight of everything else. I thrust the reality of our situation straight into the prince's confused face. It has only been a few days since I was determined to be closest to obtaining the creature type. You and the rest of the royal family keep making my adoption sound simple. So does that mean everything is ready for me? Baptized royals are given villas, are they not? Yes, signing an adoption agreement was simply simple enough, but that was far from the only thing that would need to be considered. To live as the king's adopted daughter, I would need a villa, items to furnish it, retainer candidates from among the sovereign nobles, living quarters from my any interfest retainers who accompany me, sovereign capes and brooches, and so much more than what immediately came to mind. I do not believe the royal family could adopt me without first making the necessary arrangements, I said, or do you not intend to give me a villa? Could it be that you plan to turn, toss me into the Sovereign Temple and have me serve as its High Bishop until my coming of age? That must be the case, unless you mean to tell me you've prepared my accommodations in but a few days. Oh, with such talented Sovereign Nobles, it should not, should not take even one day to prepare a mere dedication ritual. How reassuring. Sigiswal gazed across the room, still maintaining a smile. His dark green eyes eventually came to rest on the space outside the archive where his retainers were waiting his return. Hildebrand and Magdalena were there too, but they must have been told not to interrupt our discussion. They were both looking in our direction, yet made no attempt to approach us. To clarify, we were going to give you a room in one of our villas, such as while they eventually said, practically forcing out the words. We plan to have you stay with my mother, who would then, by then be your adoptive mother, or me. Oh, I gave my look of exaggerated shock. Is it customary for the royal family to grant villas only to their biological children, while giving their adopted children no but a single room? If so, then this is my first time hearing about it. Rumors paint my adopted father as a cruel man who also discriminates between his children, but he ensured that my accommodation was equal to that of my siblings. Would the Zent grant me less than that? How am I to believe that you are not looking down on Arifest to me when you intend to treat me as so poorly? That hits it just while word hurt. He winced and blinked frantically as he tried to come up with a response. The fact that a prince could no longer fake a smile was confirmative that I now dominated the conversation. Were I to take the time to identify every single problem with your suggestion, I would no longer need the dedication ritual. I shouldn't actually do that, though. I don't want the real family of the Duchess to resent me going forward. This is my last resort, but in his state of panic, Sigiswald surely thought I was only stating the obvious. I could guess as much from his lack of protests. I continue, you are right that a sudden dedication ritual will prove inconvenient. So I understand why the royal family might not consider it the best of course of action. However, I suggested it so that everyone can have an extra year to do whatever they need to do. Perhaps I should help you with the ritual, or shall we exchange something else for the time you require? I stared at Sigiswal down. He was staring back at me, searching for my intent. And besides, the dedication ritual that you guys performed last year gave you guys gave the royal family mana. That was your intention, was to give them mana that they needed to supply for the year that they need, that you need an air fest. So essentially, it gives them enough mana to last until you, come, until you become adopted, you know? After a prolonged standoff, the prince sighed. I shall heed your advice with gratitude and advice the Zent that we perform another dedication ritual. He seemed to have decided to cut his losses, so I made a whole list of extra suggestions that would prevent Arenfest from needing to participate. Arenfest would str struggle to obtain permission to use the altar and divine instruments, so we will be leave preparing the dedication ritual to the sovereignty. Using the auditorium with that stage would allow enough space for the Alfredo to participate as well. Sigiswal froze, then smiled, his usual routine. You intend to have the retainers participate as well as the, as the ops, just how much mod do you intend to take? Well, what can I say? I puffed out my chest, then repeated what Benno had taught me. I was raised to believe that when an opportunity arises, one should take it and profit as much as possible. So this is what people mean when they say the temple raised under the temple raised understand things differently. Sigiswal murmured, looking conflicted. Close, but nope, I was raised as a commoner, not a shrine maiden. Too bad for you. If you would allow me to offer some more advice, I said making the dedication ritual an annual occurrence will greatly benefit everyone. In this case, why not allow participating duchies to repeat the divine protection ritual each year, thereby encouraging them to participate? The process takes a while, so I will expect only two duchies to be able to complete their rituals per Archduke Conference. 
However, if presented with a months in a decade opportunity to obtain more divine protections, any deity will start re taking religious ceremonies seriously. If they truly wish to raise the country's mana average, then adults will need to take the ceremony seriously as well. Their contributions will encourage the children to do the same. Furthermore, I continued, Ob Klassenberg has already asked us about performing the dedication ritual at the Royal Academy on a yearly basis. If you handle this well, you will receive boons of mana at the end of each spring and winter. Rose, my mana is not something you should trade so lightly. But adopting me is? As you've made it clear, the mana crisis is so urgent that the royal family must use any method at its disposal to obtain more. Should you not spend their time coming up with as many approaches as you can? This time, Sister Twelve froze completely. I could t gather from his wide open eyes that the royal family had never expected such a suggestion. Of course, these are but a few ideas that come to mind, but where are the royal family sources? It's Matt. Where the royal family sources its mana and where the dedication ritual becomes a yearly event have absolutely nothing to do with me. May I continue to outline what preparations must be made before the ritual can be performed? Yes, of course, the prince said, though he was barely keeping up. I took some paper and started to write, keeping my eyes down as I delivered my lesson. It would not take much effort to prepare ordinances or invitations to be sent to the various duchies, information, informing of the day of the event and what they will need to bring. If you have the noble staying in the villas, prepare empty face stones and the sovereign temple prepare for the ritual, then it should not impact the Archduke Conference very much at all. We can use the large chalice from both the Royal Academy and the Sovereign Temple. Oh yes, and now that the spring prayer is over, we can also make use of the small chalices. Have the Sovereign Temple prayer those as well. At that point, I stopped writing and abruptly looked up at Sidgeswald. while he flinched when he saw my smile, no doubt sensing danger. He was right to be wary. <laughs> also, be certain to have the Royal Family advertise that the dedication ritual is being held thanks to Aaron Fest's assistance. We have been a bottom-ranking dungeon for so long, that we are not so skilled at marketing ourselves. Hold on a moment. You expect the royal family to promote Ironfest? Sigiswald asked, struggling to grasp the very idea. I nodded as though it were obvious. If you want me, if you want me, Hartmut, our high priest, and my guard knights clad in blue to participate, then that is our that is our fee. You said the royal family is attempting to maximize the benefit for everyone, did you not? Sigiswald drew his lips together in a frown. Then he sighed, gave a peaceful smile, and promised to help Ironfest earn the duchy other duchy's favor. This will be infinitely more effective than leaving it to our nobles, who were still pretty heavy-footed when it came to political maneuvering. Sylvester would be so happy when he found out. Sylvester, Benno, I did it! This is a decisive victory for this upcoming sta opening stage, right? I gave Sigiswell the notes I'd made. He looked them over, then said, I wonder, though, will the duchies not be displeased to have too much of their mana taken? If you establish well in advance that the mana is payment in to participate in a ritual, which will increase one's odds of obtaining divine protections, then you should not receive too many complaints. The duchies that really take issue can simply not participate. Will that not cause fewer duchies to take part? Will we obtain enough mind to justify the time spent preparing for it? Sigiswald asked. Indeed, as I gazed up at him, only one thought came to mind. This guy sure is a prince. Those who participate in the dedication ritual will see the good it does for the harvest and future divine protections. Those who are reluctant might be forced to think twice if you express your regret that the other duchies will get wealthier and ultimately leave them behind. Klassenberg will participate at the mention of the Royal Academy's dedication ritual, while Duranko will not even need to be prompted about the entire, since the entire duchy was tremendously eager to obtain more divine protections. Not to mention, the duchies that had miss, missed their opportunity to participate in the Royal Academy's previous ritual will surely not want to miss this chance as well. In addition, when we allow them to rep uh, repeat the divine protections ritual, they will be greatly rewarded, I said. If you hint at the knowledge gained from the underground archive, many duchies will surely leap at the chance. You will not need to fret about the turnout. Sigiswald shut his eyes for a long moment, then once again sighed and smiled. He appeared to be quite thoroughly shaken. Perhaps that was too sharp tongue for the pampered prince? Well, my mentors were Bano and Ferdinand, so there isn't much I can do about that. Oh, and as this is a ritual for educating duchies that have never participated in a religious ceremony before, I do not believe the royal family will need to take part as you did in the winter, I added. Sigiswald was relieved to hear that. I see. We'll, we will prepare the ceremony ourselves and encourage the duchies to participate. However, could we ask you to make the rejuvenation potions? In the sovereignty, we must prioritize making them for the royal family. The duchies will prepare their own, would they not? Many nobles need to keep at least one on their hips on you, so we need only to warn them to bring sip airs. At once, the prince's eyes widened, but did Arifest not prepare them for the royal academy ceremony? Back then, we were having duchies participate in our research, so we thought it necessary to give them a reward. On this occasion, however, Arifest will already be offering its time and expertise to treat the country about rituals at the royal family's request. I do not see any reason why we would also need to prepare rejuvenate, rejuvenation potions. Is it not far more important that I continue working through the documents in the underground archive? 
I'll need to enjoy it while I can. Once the Arctic Conference ends, the handover and such will take up so much of my time, they probably won't get to read for an entire year. This was my only chance to visit the Underground Archive, and reading time was obviously far more important than rejuvenation potions. I continued, we could also make them to sell, but I could not consider that an option. Jawanko will purchase our entire stock and devour its resources to re replicating our recipe. Perhaps we could intend to instead sell the most powerful of the rejuvenation potions taught in class. But, again, I oppose the idea. There are, those are owned by everyone and cannot, would not bring much profit to Aaronfest. Having the knights gather at our spot so that we are already busy scholars can make rejuvenation potions would only burden us. I now see why Aaronfest has grown so wealthy all of a sudden, said Wall said. Exhaustion then crept onto his smile. I can all, am also painfully aware why the nobles of your duchy are struggling to keep up with their new rank. I smile back. It truly is wonderful that we have come to understand each other better. Let us conclude our discussion about the dedication ritual and move on to my conditions for becoming the king's adopted daughter. There's still more? Hmm, that was just a preliminary topic. We haven't even addressed the most pressing issue yet, have we? Okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. 30 minutes. I'll keep going. Conditions for being adopted. So you do even need to ask, I said? All we have done so far is agree upon a way to buy ourselves more time. There's still no reason for Aaronfest to agree to the adoption. How is the extra year not already beneficial enough, such as well ask? Caution arising in his eyes. You were the one to suggest it, and why would you ask us to do more, something that you would not profit from? More than that, I wanted to know why he had thought that a year to prepare would count as a perk of my adoption. Aside, if some urgent circumstances required you to leave for another duchy and stay there, would you be able to move right away? He would need time to make arrangements and pass your, man pass your mantle, among other things. And in this scenario, if you were given a year to but a year to prepare... Would you consider it a gracious gift that benefited you and the sovereignty? I am an adult, whereas you are still underage. No matter how much you might be doing in Aaronfest, I shouldn't be. I shudder so, sold her so much more. Only then did it occur to me that his understanding of my duties differed greatly from my own. The royal family seemed to think that I didn't know more than any other child of an op. Ah, so that's why they thought it would come as soon as they were ready for me. Prince Sidiswell, I do not think you understand. When it comes to the printing industry and the temple, I am not merely assisting Ob Aaron Fest or preparing for the future. I am the one in charge. That is why my handover will take me so long. But you are under age, the prince remarked with a stiff smile. You must have adult guardians who oversee your work. How bold of you to say that, I replied, fixing him with the coldest look I can manage while still seeming courteous. I used to have a guardian, but he was sent to Aaron's back by royal decree. Now, there is nobody to oversee me in the temple. I am the high bishop and orphanage director while the high priest is one of my retainers. Of course he would accompany me to the sovereignty alongside my other retainers, meaning we would need to train a new high bishop, orphanage director, and high priest in just one year. We already had adults in these positions, but they will presumably leave with me, which will cause a lot of problems for Aaronfest. There was zero chance that Hartman would stay behind. He would ensure he was coming to the sovereignty, or no matter how much it inconvenienced the rest of us. I didn't want to sound too confident, but Clarissa would absolutely come along too. Oh yeah, definitely. In a single year, I said, my replacements will need to memorize each ceremony's prayers and procedures, as well as the arrangements necessary to perform them. The burden is certainly a heavy one. Religious ceremonies have a direct and sizable impact on the duchy's harvest. And one cannot read the High Bishop's Bible without an understanding of ancient language. Do you realize now that the handover will not be simple? I couldn't help but grin. Those of the royal family still were una weren't able to read the old writing, so there was nothing they could say in protest. Sidiswell gave me a scrutinizing look, searching for the true meaning behind my words, before sat conventionally conceding. What is Ab Aaronfest thinking, he muttered, making such a young child the highest authority in so many fields is far from normal. Hartman, the man whom Ferdinand trained to replace him as high priest, is both my retainer and an adult. We thought he was perfect for the role, as did Ab Aaronfest, and we expected to have, have until my coming of age to train his successor. I would rather you not assume that Aaronfest can simply take skilled workers from other duchies, as the sovereignty does. I did say that we were suffering from a lack of manpower, no? So just while cast his eyes down a little. Only now, after all this time, he have, was he realizing that a simple statement could give way to all sorts of dramatic, drastically different interpretations. Even those who simply marry into another duchy require a year or two to settle their affairs, secure what they will require for their new life, and say their farewells, do they not? I asked. How can this, How then can the single year that Aaron Fest has been given, know that it has needed to bargain for, be considered generous by any means? As I suddenly badmouthed the royal family for not al having allowed us more time to begin with, I thought about my future plans. Considering the state of the printing industry and the fact that the Gutenbergs wouldn't be back from Kernberger until autumn, I really would have preferred two or three years if possible. I continued, a single year will not even come close to comp compensating for the devastating losses that Aaron Fest will suffer in my absence. 
As for me, I will need to give up my reading time so that I can devote myself to training a replacement high bishop, orphanage director, and overseer of the printing industry. It is a given that the royal family will need to make up for what our duchy is going to lose. But what is being offered on top of that? I cannot agree to a deal that does not benefit Arenfest overall. The prince had just seen my determination to squeeze as much value from the other duchies as possible, and now he was quaking in fear over how thoroughly it would wring out the royal family. I can understand the high bishop and orphanage director parts, they say, but the printing industry, are you in charge of that as well? It's my baby. It's her baby there. Most of my immediate control over Aaron Fest's printing industry has already been passed on, so I do not expect that part of the handover process to be much of an issue. There are still many questions to be answered, though. Shall we bring the industry to the sovereignty? How many of my personnel will accompany me? Will they be allowed to open the stores there? Will they be able to build workshops? Oh, and then we must decide how many craftspeople I will bring with me. How many I will need to hire now? How long will they train for? How they will do business with sovereign merchants and stores? As you can see, there are plenty of details that need to be ironed out. The workload is so daunting that one would seldom even want to think about it, as I am sure you would agree. So just while stared at the table for a few seconds, stone-faced and smiled. That is the work of scholars and attendants, not arch two candidates. Of course I will entrust as much to them as I can. I will still need to do the final checks myself, so I am sure you can imagine. Documents do not always reflect the full truth. Scholars are not always entirely honest with their reports, and the methods employed in Arifest differ from those of the sovereignty. I recall times when scholars had given inaccurate reports about problematic issues or situations in an attempt to avoid seeming incompetent. On many occasions, one had to check the front lines in person to confirm what was actually happening. That is remarkable insight, Rosemary. I see that you truly are in charge of such things. Indeed, all the more reason for you to trust me when I say that a single year is not nearly enough time, I said forcefully repeating my wish. Tintiswald shook his head, maintaining his polite expression, though I understand your circumstances and the amount of mana obtained during the dedication ritual may change things somewhat, but there's only so long we can wait. Do your best to finish everything within the next year. Now I wish to ask what Arifest will propose as, comp as compensation for its losses. It may be best if you allow Lady Magdalena to join us. His green eyes were clearly visibly tense, no doubt because of the upcoming negotiations. Um, Prince Stigiswald, I will discuss Arifest's conditions with you, but you must know that I will state my own opinions purely so that misunderstandings and unnoticed discrepancies can be corrected. In the end, Ab Arifest and the Zend must make the final decisions. I do not see the need to summon Lady Magdalena in a, to a conversation such as this. No matter what I said, I did not have the authority to decide on matters of such great importance in the duchy. Sylvester so will need to decide on Arifest's behalf during a meeting with the Zend and everyone else. As we have now come to an understanding on common sense subjects and the nature of value, I said, you would need only convey my request to the Zent. After all, it does not fall to us to decide what terms are presented and agreed upon in the end. I was stressing that this was going to be a decisive, decisive conversation so that I wouldn't be scolded for going over the op's head or saying things that I shouldn't. Plus, it was the perfect escape route for me if the royal family targeted one weakness after another of mine. I could just say that the final decision rested on Ob Arenfest. On that note, I could use simple logic for our discussion about the dedication ritual. Though it was my suggestion, Sigiswald had ultimately decided to go through with it, meaning I hadn't acted on my own. I could make, just make a few suggestions and taunted him a little. The royal family will need to take care of and pay for things, so we're good. Above all else, it had only been last year when the royal family elected to move to Ferdinand to Ehrensbach by a real decree, while an archduke candidate could do nothing to oppose. I can still remember how much that pained Sylvester, and I wasn't going to have him be powerless again. Ah, uh, yes, that is not something for us to decide between ourselves, said Schwal said with a chuckle, learning that I didn't have a final say in the matter. Had come as a tremendous relief to him. Pray tell, what are your conditions for the adoption? Have I made him dislike me, I wonder? Well, whatever. I hope Arifest will want to make his own request, I imagine, but I will tell you mine. If these conditions are accepted alongside a year or more of preparation time, I will accept the adoption without any fuss. Of course, if they are refused, I will not resort to treason or anything of the sort. I do not intend to cause any undue trouble, I can assure you. I see, Sigiswal replied. Sylvester had only recently refused the royal family's previous suggestions, so my little preface must have come as welcome news. However, I continued, taking this opportunity to drive a point home. I would seriously rethink my relationship with the rest of the royal family. I cannot go along with those who would prioritize themselves and the country while showing such blatant disregard for my duchy. Arifest is my gadooled, and I was raised in the temple, so please remember this if you intend to have me adopted. It was no doubt considered normal for someone being adopted or married to another duchy to prioritize their new home first and foremost, but it wasn't as if Sylvester canceling my current adoption would make me forget my connection to Arifest. This definitely wasn't something to brag about, but I was still attached to Ferdinand and the lower city despite them having both been taken away from me. I value them dearly and would doubtless fly into a violent rage if they were put in danger. 
I understand that it is best not to expect common sense to apply to you. So what payment do you seek from Air, for Air Invest? The just well asked, urging me to get on with a calm countenance. I said the same to Prince Anastasius, but I want Ferdinand to be freed from his engagement and return to Air Invest. His return would solve most of our problems. It would only take a year for Ferdinand to resolve our mana shortage, contain the lies gangs, and train our successors. Plus, I would no longer need to worry about his health. During my two-year slumber in the Derive, Justice had taken over communication with the lower Mercedes merchants. I am sure that Anastasis has already told you this, but we cannot simply return Ferdinand to Erefest. Doing so would mean bringing Ehrensbach to ruin. To just well said, uh, rejecting the best option from Ehrensbach before even running it by the Zent. It might be possible if you were to send another unmarried, unengaged member of an archducal family to govern Ehrensbach in his stead, but we cannot think of any suitable candidates. If you know of any from Ehrensbach, convince them to accept and introduce them to us within the next year. Indeed, that was basically what Anastasius had said. It seemed that not a single person in the royal family was willing to let Ferdinand out of Ehrensbach. That peeved me, but it was well within my expectations. As much as I didn't want to accept it, Ferdinand was now so deeply rooted in Ehrensbach's power structure that he couldn't easily be removed. In which case, I just need to secure his safety and improve his living conditions. Sylvester had told me that Ferdinand was gone and that was he could no longer consider him part of our duchy. Thus, as of Ehrensbach, he wasn't going to bargain for him during these negotiations. I would need to take matters into my own hands. Prince Anastasia said that I should, after all. I typed my expression, then smiled. The first prince's smile wavered, but only for a moment. I understand that cancelling Ferdinand's engagement would not be feasible right now, I said. I also understand that obtaining a Grudgeshite would potentially change that. My intention was to see whether Anastasia's opinion was shared by others in the royal family. So just while I nodded slowly, yes, obtaining the Grudgeshite would make cancelling the engagement possible. Then I asked that you delay the wedding until either I obtain the Grudgeshite or we confirm that I will never be able to. He can avoid punishment by association as long as he's not married to Lady Dead Lindy, correct? Dang it. Uh, da, 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 da. It's simple. If canceling the engagement requires me to get the Grudgerscheidt, then we could just stall it until that happens. Stigeswald crosses his arms and fell into thought. We cannot delay their star binding any longer than we already have. Considering the potential impact on Letizia's status in the Royal Academy, they will need to be married in the event that Dead Lindy becomes Ob. As soon as Detlindy died at Ehrensbach's foundation and was recognized as a duchy's op during the following Archduke conference, Ehrensbach law will demand that Letizzi be reduced to the status of an archnoble. To prevent that, they would need to ensure that Letizzi was adopted before, between the Starbine ceremony held on the first day of the conference and the op confirmation at the end. Her status at the Royal Academy would change drastically depending on whether she was entered as an archduke candidate or an archnoble. In that case, could the royal family not simply nullify that bizarre law which has seen so many Archduke candidates fall on status? Only Obs may nullify duchy laws. We made the same suggestion as you, but the late Ob Ehrensbach did not act in our advice, so there is nothing more we can do. As long as the duchy's practices didn't contradict the Book of Laws, the royal family wouldn't have the power to change them. Duchy laws usually arose from unique historical problems and incidents, so while they sometimes appear to be bizarre or pointless from an outside perspective, they were often crucial to the smooth operation of the duchy that followed them. Speaking of which, I guess Dunkelberger has a bunch of strange laws too, owing to its long history. If your objective is to prevent Ferdinand from being deemed guilty by association, then we should not hasten your adoption into the royal family, such as that asked. The Starbucks ceremony was held on the first day of the Archduke Conference, so the idea was for me to adopt it a short while before the conference and then return to the archive. Obtaining the Grudgerscheidt then and there would mean that I could save Ferdinand from having to marry Detlinde, whereas failing to obtain it would simply result in their marriage proceeding normally. No matter what happened, Letizia would not be disadvantaged. Of course, this will give you slightly less than a year to your request, Prince explained. Is that acceptable? My eyes wandered a bit. Ferdinand had instructed me to delay things for at least a year, but would a little bit, a little bit less than that be okay? I would need to ask. I cannot give you an answer right away, I said. I may cons must consider how much time we will need to safely release Ferdinand from his engagement. In the meantime, until the day he is either freed or married, he is going to be trapped in Ehrensbach as a mere guest. I would ask that the Zent order that he be given a hidden room at the very least. So Chua went from being relaxed that I was no longer pushing the issue to be king completely stone-faced. Then predictably enough, he smiled. It is not customary for those marrying into another duchy to live as guests and not have their own hidden room until they are wed. I do not think we would be able to force such a demand on Ehrensbach. I could guess from his polite tone that he thought my temple on bringing him once again made me ignorant about noble culture, but he was surely mistaken. Florencia and Bonifacio had educated me already. In any case, if Sichuan wanted to appeal to tradition, then so be it. I would simply fight with fire with fire. I am aware of that custom, I replied, which is why I did not make my request sooner. But do you know what else is customary? Engagements being cancelled as a result of a persistent delay. 
Given the complications that he has faced thus far, Ferdinand would normally have reason enough to re return to Arenfest and ask for thanks to Lady Lenny to be broken off. The royal decree is forcing him to stay engaged to her, but the least you can do is allow him to return to Arenfest while he waits. As long as the engagement is not canceled, it will not breach the royal decree whatsoever. One could not force the bride or groom to stay in another duchy if, after they arrived, their wedding was suddenly delayed. Such a critical error smacked of, reeked of, smacked of negligence on the receiving duchy's part, and it was a serious enough problem that the bride or groom would entire, be entirely within their rights to cancel the engagement entirely. Such as Walt shook his head. Not only was Ferdinand paired with Detlandy by a royal decree, but he is also now responsible for a, lack, a lot of very important administrative work in Ehrensbach. He cannot return to Arenfest for fear he might leak some sensitive information. You can understand that as an Archduke Canada, can you not? I understand that Ferdinand carried out such crucial duties in the first place despite being only a guest proves the unmistakable selfishness of Ehrensbach and the royal family. Based on tradition, he has every right to return home. To be clear, Ferdinand had accepted the royal decree and cut ties with Arenfest to avoid troubling us. It was unlikely that he would even want to return but that had nothing to do with this negotiation. My focus right now was securing him a hidden room. If you and the rest of the royal family really do value tradition, then allow Ferdinand to return to Arenfest until Ehrensbach's foundation has been died and the wedding can finally take place. If you do not, then you must demand that he be given a hidden room. Then during the late Ab Ehrensbach's funeral in the summer, the royal family should confirm that Ehrensbach has actually done as instructed. You refuse to cancel the engagement, which leaves me no choice but to ensure that Ferdinand had at least has better living conditions. Faced with a choice between one compromise or another, such as well give a broad smile and then let out a quiet sigh. In any case, this is not a decision I can make myself. I will leave the final verdict to father. Is that acceptable? Although the happiest outcome was for Ferdinand to return home, I understand that not even tradition would allow for that when he was currently a shouldering Aaron's box government and teaching Letizia. That was exactly why I needed to ensure he got a hidden room. I nodded, figuring that it was fine to leave this decision to the Zent. Since so well eyed me carefully, his expression unchanged. You certainly are invested in Ferdinand, Rosemine. Of course, back when I was in the temple, he was more sick I was more sickly than you could ever even imagine. His hard work and supply of potions saved my life. Then he diligently trained me to ensure that I would survive in noble society. It is because of his teachings that I am able to come able to come first in class each year at the Royal Academy. I owe him so much to him, yet not even a fraction of my debt has been repaid. He is my mentor and in my eyes, family. At the very least, I wanted to leave this room with the princess's guarantee that Ferdinand would not be deemed guilty by association. I continued, I want the royal family to imagine the worry that his current situation brings me and the fury that I feel toward those who forced it upon him in the first place. Ferdinand, who was so precious to me, was moved to a duchy on poor terms with Ehrenfest, forced into engagement, and thrust into a predicament that requires him to be so despondent dependent on potions as King Charcoal. He is forbidden from returning home even now that his wedding has been postponed. And despite his love of spending time in his workshop, immersed in research, he has not even been given a hidden room. I assure you, what we, you imagine will not be pleasant. Sigiswalt was frozen in place. Though the corners of his mouth were still drawn upward, the blood was draining from his face. I placed a hand on my cheek and sighed. Worst of all, on top of everything that Ferdinand is having to endure, he is going to be punished for Lady Dentlinde's crimes. I must admit, no matter how often I am told to view him as a stranger now that he lives in Ehrensbach, I find myself unable to stay calm. I have never been good at containing my emotions. Ahimana is infamous for rampaging out of control. I can wonder what would happen if such a rampage were to occur now. Seriously, what would happen? I can't even begin to imagine what kind of an impact that might have. I had a lot more mana now. I was better at controlling it and my staff had evolved. But what if my emotions got the better of me? As I was pondering this, Sitchwald appeared to be contemplating something as well. After a long silence, he looked at me in the eye and smiled. To put your fears to rest, Rosamund, I will speak with my father about how we can help Ferdinand. I will devote my all to ensuring that he is not unjustly sentenced. My, how delightful. I shall put my trust in you, Prince Sigiswald. Yes! Now, I shouldn't need to worry about any of that punishment by association business. I did it, Ferdinand. This is bound to earn me a very good or two, right? I hope. I victoriously clenched my fist. Meeting the bare minimum of my requirements had put me in such a good mood that I wanted to hum, but our discussion was far from over. I tied my expression, adjusted my posture, and then swiftly moved on to the next, uh, next of my conditions. To compensate for the fact that Aaron Fest has lost Ferdinand and will eventually lose me... The duchy will need new sources of mana. In that regard, I revise the Zen to enforce a five-year rule. Brides and grooms will only be allowed to marry into Arenfest. We will not lose even one more person to another duchy. Florencia has suggested that condition. Because of our rising rank and abundance of new trends, there were plenty of duchies that wanted to connect with us, and they were courting more and more of our students. We had ten star buddings a year on average, and about half of them were with other duchies. We were bound to acquire a steady flow of new adults if we made marrying into Arenfest mandatory. Thus, 
Then those married couples will presumably have children, making this a highly effective method for increasing the Duchess' population. Marriage is not involving the Archducal family, only required the permission of the relevant OBS. So Citrus Ball gave me a brisk nod. That suggestion will most likely be approved. I would also like 30 to 40 of the magic tools given to newborns. We have a glut of children who cannot become nobles for lack of one, and I would like to use this opportunity to raise them properly. 30 to 40, Citrus Ball repeated. Is that not an unusually large number to ask for? His smile deepened, perhaps to indicate that my request will prove both troublesome and expensive. Oh? Considering that this is a condition for the marriage, I think we were generous with our calculations. Vernon and I have such a wealth of mana that a mere 30 to 40 men nobles will not even come close to compensating for our loss. Please stop to consider just how much harm the royal family is inflicting upon Aaronfest. If we were given the magic tools I was requesting, as well as the year to prepare, then Aaronfest will presumably have enough mana even after my move to the Sovereignty. Furthermore, I said, could you perhaps instruct the Sovereign nobles from Aaronfest to temporarily return home? That one was a request from Sylvester. As it stood, we weren't receiving any intelligence from the Sovereignty and other duchies. Just as had a somehow managed to supply us in the past, but now that he was gone, we were running blind. We were having to rely on Clarissa for intelligence, which slowed just how dire the situation was. This should also be a good opportunity for me to meet the sovereign nobles from Aaronfest before I go to the sovereignty myself. Sylvester had refused, but the royal family had urged him to send more Aaronfest nobles to the sovereignty to strengthen our power back there, our power by power base there. It was probably normal to pick retainers from among the sovereignty nobles to begin establishing a faction, and with the, and with that thought, a wave of realization suddenly hit me. Would I even be able to see eye to eye with the Sovereign Nobles? They had moved away during the height of Ye Veronica's reign. Whereas I only have ever, been, ever known Aaronfest and Aaronfest without her, I could already foresee us struggling to communicate. If we didn't meet and break the ice in advance of my adoption, then I would surely struggle to decide which of them I wanted in my retinue. That is precisely what we were hoping for as well, said Schwal said joyously, immediately accepting another of my conditions. The royal family had apparently been troubled that so few of our four nobles wanted to return home. They would uh, use our request as an excuse to send them back in the winter. Last of all, there are some personal conditions unrelated to Aaronfest that I desire. Due to various circumstances, I have underage retainers who are name sworn to me. I would ask for permission to bring them all with me, regardless of their age or status. Can you not wait until they come of age? The prince asked, confused. If retainers are underage, then you will require permission from their parents. Plus, considering matters in the Royal Academy, it will be best for them to stay in Aaronfest. Some of them no longer have parents, I replied, and explained what it ha I wanted to be communicated to the Zent. As their names and their lives are in my hands, I have more authority over them than their parents would. Anything they do require do requires my permission, and there is a reason why they cannot be left in Aaronfest without me. You may ask Ob Aaronfest for the details. I decided to leave it at that, then took a deep breath. This next condition was one that I absolutely could not afford to lose. I sat up straight, which made Sid do the same. He was still wearing a smile, but I could see that he was tensing up slightly. I gave the prince the most intense look I could manage. This is my most significant condition and one that I absolutely cannot budge on. If you wish to marry me, Prince Sigiswell, then there is something that you must pay very close attention to. And when might that be? In a most forceful voice, I said, I desire the, for the freedom to enter any library or book room without the sovereignty and permission to read all of the documents within them. In part to obtain information not available in this underground archive, I also want a book room in my villa. Sigiswell was silent for a few seconds, then he put on a right, rigid smile. A book room in your villa, are you, you say, one separate from the Royal Academy? In truth, I agreed to marry Wilfred and become Aaronfest's first wife and return for complete control over the Duchy's book rooms. Anyone I marry must give me a library. If you are to be my husband, Prince Sigiswell, then you must put a book room in the villa I am given. My dream proposal involves my husband to be showing me a library he built just for me and the countless books he collected. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? <laughs> uh, he's probably thinking, what is wrong with this girl? You do wish to marry me, do you not? He nodded. I am glad that you are being so open-minded about our, about our union. Buddy, I can see you twitching. Incidentally, Sid Walk continued, this book room you desire, how large do you expect it to be? Larger than the one in Aaronfest's castle, but I would not mind it being larger than the one Ferdinand owed. Ferdinand? Indeed, I replied with a firm nod. He entrusted to me his estate and a vast collection of books before leaving for Aaronsbach. Now, here I am, marrying a prince, would it be wrong to expect a greater gift than the one given to me by my guardian? It must be simple enough for the royal, academy, royal family to create a book room larger than one that belonged to a member of the Aaronfest Archducal family. <laughs> I started getting to de going to details about Ferdinand's book room, describing its dimensions and the number of books inside, and the smile slowly vanished from Fizzerswell's face. Hmm, wait, is this a lot to ask for a prince? Um, if you think my request for a book room in my villa is too unreasonable, then could you give me the royal library instead? 
Living in a library has always been a dream of mine. I look forward to seeing what you as my future husband will give me. <laughs> what the fuck? I gave the prince my sweetest smile yet, trying to indicate that this was his chance to butter me up. But he merely stared at me in a daze and muttered, Am I truly going to marry this girl? <laughs> ha ha! You were the one who brought it up, were you not? Hmm, am I mistaken or something? I cocked my head at him and decided to ask for confirmation. It would be hugely embarrassing if I was operating under a misconception of some kind. You did say that you wished to marry me for the benefit of the royal family, right? I asked. Did I mishear you or something? No, not at all. I am simply, um, how shall I put this? Surprised? For the benefit of the royal family, yes, that is true. But are you truly satisfied with the idea? At last, something had compelled him to ask me how I felt about all this. This was my only opportunity to be honest, so I decided to speak the truth. I am not at all interested in becoming the wife of a man whose second marriage I blessed as high bishop. But if this is my duty as the king's adopted daughter, then I will accept my fate. That is why I am requesting at least a library to help protect my sanity. My engagement to Wilfred was the same. There was nothing I could do but accept my guardian's will. It wasn't an environment in which I could abs simply do as I pleased. At least a library, Prince Sigiswell repeated a distant look in his eyes. He certainly didn't seem like someone who had gotten his wish after speaking about it so passionately. But why? I didn't understand. Well, putting that aside, that concludes my honest thoughts and conditions, I said. I will leave the actual decision-making to Ob Arenfest in the Zent. Please be careful when discussing these matters with the royal family. Once I am adopted, my hope is that we will, can all stay on good terms for years to come. Okay, um, I'm going to have to end this off here, and I'll see everybody in the next one.